Today, we're going to be talking about the three keys to capturing more child care leads and boosting enrollment. This is the first in a five-part series of webinars that we're going to be releasing, going over our 2022 Building Blocks for Success report. So we take our customer base, uh, the information from them, as well as throughout the industry to help come up with some of the major trends that we're seeing in our business. So as we kick things off, uh, it's going to be me and my co-presenter, Celine, uh, here today for everybody. So my name is Mike Hook. I'm our Vice President of Sales. Uh, Celine, I'll turn it over to you for a quick little introduction. <laughs> I'm Celine DePrisco. I am the Success Operation Manager, and I am um, here in Australia. So I am, your, I am local to, to you folks here on the call as well. Celine, so I'm... I'm a handful of years into the child care industry. How long have you been working with child care and within this industry now? That's a good question. Oh gosh, I hope this, isn't, this answer isn't gonna age me. No, uh, I think 2017 is when I began to work in the child care industry. So what is that? We're at 2022 now, goodness. Um, so yeah, just over five years um, in, in the industry working, with, working, yeah. All right, so. She's the expert, uh, and you're going to have some <laughs> stories to fill in some of the content today for some of her experience here. And as we get going for everybody, the agenda that we're going to go through today is the challenges with today's parent experience. So the parent journey, it's inconvenient, it's time consuming, and what you need to know about millennial parents, your number one demographic. They make up such a big percentage of the parents today how the parent experience affects enrollment and retention. And then and at the end of this, we wanna give you tactical things that you can take away. So some education as well as some actionable items. So we're also gonna be going through offering easy ways for parents to inquire online, how to follow up impacts your enrollment rate and how to use lead tracking to streamline and grow your center. So the challenge with today's parent experience. So the parent experience defines the journey a parent takes from the initial inquiry to retention. So all the way from the time they first are seeking care until that child ages out and is no longer eligible to be in child care anymore, including the key conversion points along the way. So when we talk about the existing process, the existing parent journey, what we've noticed and what our customers have mentioned to us in the industry is that there are a lot of starts and stops. It can take up to several months. The faster you respond, the better. And this is all keyed in off these main triggering events that parents go through when they're selecting care. So right off the bat, when a mother gets pregnant, big triggering event, right? She knows mm -hmm. that she's going to have to put her child in care at some point. During that pregnancy, it's going to start the search. Well, there are some other areas to be cognizant of as well. Is a family unhappy with their current provider, with their current care provider? Are they considering leaving? Are they considering going somewhere else? Is a family moving? Are they going to move and go to another area where they might be searching for care? There's all these different little events that will start triggering parents and families to come search for care and search for you. When they do this, the idea is how can you make this process as frictionless as possible? So how can you make it simple for parents to engage with you and do so in a way that doesn't overburden you, that doesn't put more on your plate, but in fact might actually take some time away so you can engage at a higher quality while still focusing on the other areas of your business. And so what are these areas of friction that we commonly see? So I wanna focus first on one of the number one issues that comes up and it's all around speed to response. So slow or no responses to new inquiries and tour, and tour requests. Wasted time going back and forth with emails and then no follow-up after tours. So when a family reaches out for care, when a family comes to take a tour, when they're going back and forth for all this information from you to get this all scheduled, Parents today expect quick responses. We'll go into more detail on that in a little bit. But every time you're delayed, every time it takes, you know, that one extra day or that one extra hour to get that response, 
parents are getting information from somewhere else. And we know parents are looking at more centers than ever before. It's not just they're stopping from the first one going. They're actually looking at multiple places. So if you're responding quickly, if you're responding in a timely manner, it'll help reduce the friction in that decision-making process for them. The other thing, automation and organization are your best friends as a center director or organization in order to help make sure that you can eliminate this friction, talk to these parents and do so in a quick fashion. And then also once you have these conversations, make sure you're staying organized and on top of it so that you can know what you said time and time again. So some other things too, sitting indefinitely on a wait list kind of falls in that same line. What are you doing to engage families that are just sitting there so that they don't think they're uh, on a list that's not even getting tended to? And then limited or no ongoing communication to encourage retention. The child, these are a parent's most important thing in the world. Uh, you need to be on top of your game during these communications. So these are some big themes right here that impact the parent experience and have an outsized impact on the parent experience because of what they expect. Ultimately, it's asking, how easy is it to do business with you? So the challenges for the parent and what they expect instead. So how can you flip those challenges on their head and get to a space that's really easy? So parents want things that are convenient. They want self-service option and they want quick responses. So today's buyer, and think about it for a second as well, when you go to buy something or when you go to make a decision, where do you go first? You're hopping onto Google and you're gonna go research the, the company, whatever you wanna buy whether it's a consumer good, whether it's a business you want to do, uh, to do business with, you're going to Google first. And once you do that, you're going to want to do your research online. Your parents are the exact same way. So they want a convenient way to search for you online. They want to find information. They want to see on your website, tell me about the programs and the offerings and what you're doing and the hours and the care and that social proof from parents. They want self-service options. They want to be able to say, oh, this place looks great. I just want to come tour. So how are you helping them do that and facilitating that? And again, speed is the name of the game. So how quickly are you able to respond? And how are you doing it in a way that parents want those responses? So text communications is key with today's buyers. All of these things, when you package it together, quick, easy steps that will help give parents and especially new parents, a really great feeling going into business with you and setting up those initial tours because you're meeting them where they're at. So the parent journey in and of itself here, um, there's a lot here. And I think when we think about it, uh, we're going to kind of break this up into a couple different parts. And so Lynn, I would love for you uh, to hop in here and explain a little bit about what you're seeing, um, talking to customers, your experience in the industry around kind of these main key parts within this parent journey and how you can really take these inconvenient systems that might be set up now and turn them into something that can work into your favor to help drive enrollments. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mike. Um, I mean, for myself, I know that I resonate with a lot of, you know, what you've said. We're all really busy. Work families juggling our busy lives and so having my time wasted is something that I'm never interested in you know we always want there to make sure that we're you know following up on efficient processes and making sure that we're doing things the most efficient quick way and when I'm talking to families fairly regularly I actually spoke to one parent who shared with me um, that she actually did a little bit of shopping around um, you know which is fairly common we see that with a lot of uh, parents these days and had uh, toured two services um, and in fact one service followed up with her really, really quickly and efficiently. They made the whole experience really efficient for her. She said it was just a beautiful parent experience for her, in fact. And this was surprising to hear, but they made the enrollment process really easy, which we always often hear is a bit of a pain point. But she said that was a really fast, efficient experience for her. And so when it came time to deciding which service, it was a bit of a no-brainer for her because she said, well, this service was so fast and efficient and made it a really, really great experience for me. So she chose that service. When I asked her about that other service, she actually said to me, ironically, 
that she's still waiting to hear back from them. They never followed up. They never called her. So, you know, who knows where her paperwork is and where she sits with that service at the moment. Um, but on the flip side of that, what's really interesting is that she's a, um, a part of a local mums group. And so the, the other parents there knew that she had recently enrolled her child. So of course they asked, you know, how was that? You know, is, is the child enjoying, you know, enjoying the, the new service? Um, and of course, word of mouth is super powerful. We all know that. And so she shared that in fact, yes, um, her son is loving, loving the new service, but she really honed in on the fact that, um, you know, she liked both services, but this one service really made that experience lovely for her. Um, it was fast, it was efficient. And so she she really honed in and shared that part of the experience with the local parents um, and especially, you know, really, really other busy moms who she knew were working. So she knew she didn't want to have them have their time wasted. And the, the best part of this all is that when those other parents who were also seeking childcare, it was time for them to, uh, you know, shop around and, and look for uh, childcare. They in fact didn't actually shop around all that much. They knew that they were interested in that service because of that really positive um, word of mouth from that parent. Um, and also because they knew that it was going to be efficient, quick, you know, a positive experience for them. And in fact, now I think there's about four or five of those uh, families at that mums group um, that not, now all have their child enrolled at that service. And it was all based off of that one really, really positive experience for that one parent. Uh, that's, that's amazing. And I think word of mouth can't be, can't be overstated. Never, no. When we talk about the quick response too, you know, when you think about the parents, everything in this journey, when you shrink that response down, and what I like about this story is it's an ability to engage with families. So when you send that first email out, what are you sending with it? Is it a piece of educational information? Is it more about your center? Are you giving parents what they want, knowing that, hey, not only am I responding quickly, but I'm setting up systems that allow me to give valuable information through and through. And then mm -hmm. when you get those referrals that come in, are you making sure that you're showing like, hey, this is a referral from X parent. Wow, they've been really good for our business. You know, I wanna make sure that, obviously we take care of everybody, but you know, that type of stuff has an outsized impact for everything. So I love that story because it's, you know, you set this up to have a really nice parent experience and it's not just a parent experience for one. It's a parent experience for the whole community. Exactly. It's consistency in that parent experience. And so when you have that experience, it's consistent for all your families. And that's what the families are looking for. You know what I mean? Like they expect that. And that was exactly what those families, um, I'm sure if we went back and you know spoke to all those parents, they would share that they also had just as pleasant of an experience because it was consistent for all of them. And I think the experience is, is a good thing to touch on, right? So like when you look at these and a lot of stats here, um, that I'll have you talk to in a moment as well, but 80% of all the parents right now are millennials. Eight out of 10 parents who are looking for care, who are putting their children in care, uh, who are your buyers, whether it's a single center, whether it's a larger organization, it doesn't matter because millennials make up such a big part of the population. And, you know, I know, Celine, we were talking about this beforehand, but we're millennials. We grew up in the digital yeah. age, right? Yeah. Like I have had a phone for a long time. Like we've seen the internet evolve, but we've grown up in this digital age where it's an expectation now. And you know, all the things that come with that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I love this slide because it, I love stats. I love metrics and more so I think because I think I really resonate with a lot of what I'm seeing on this slide. Um, and there's three key things that I think really connect to me. And also I can say, yep, hand on heart. That's, that's true to, 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 you know, to me as a millennial. One being 73% of millennials say that uh, valuing their time is important. So that's the bottom one on the, on the corner there. Um, I mean, I think most people would probably agree with that. Um, we're all really busy. Um, and I know I, I appreciate when I feel as though someone is valuing my time. I think time is probably one of our most precious resources we have. So I think it's a really important um, that you make conscious efforts to show that you do value your, you know, your customers and your, and your parents' time. And that's really important to, you know, keep, keep in mind. 
Um, 40% of millennials prefer self-service over human contact with business. Absolutely. I think that's also a bit of an expectation and, you know, nowadays, um, when you're booking hair appointments or doctor appointments, um, I know it's really, you know, kind of quite common for the, there to be that self-service option, at least, you know, not everyone's going to prefer it, but I think it's really important to have that option be available, um, to, to certain families. And then 60%, so that's, that's a significant number there of millennials like to communicate via text messaging. And again, I think Mike and I can probably say, yep, that's likely true, you know, when you're communicating with your families and friends um, and also just, you know, reminders and things like that. It's really handy to, uh, you know, have that on your mobile device. I know we're kind of in an age where everyone thinks they can multitask. I think some better than others, uh, but nonetheless, you know, we always like to be doing, we're always doing more than one thing and so having that communication, especially about, you know, important notices or events um, over your phone, which, you know, more likely than not is going to be in your hand, um, I think is definitely the preferred method. Um, so like, you know, like we mentioned, myself being a millennial and a lot of my friends being a millennial, they're currently shopping around for um, childcare. And one of my friends actually shared with me that um, she missed quite a few tours completely accidentally because uh, they were being, the reminders and notifications were being sent to her email, uh, an email that she wasn't checking. So, you know, that was something that she said, if, you know, if only they had sent me an email, uh, sorry, sent me a text message, I wouldn't have missed those opportunities. I, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have missed those tours. And she was feeling quite badly about it. Um, but I really like to think about the self-service because we're all, like I said, super busy. And what maybe your free time, which is at 5 a.m., maybe someone else's free time, which is at 11.30 p.m. So allowing people to have that self-service option, I think is really awesome because number one, um, some people are just hesitant to even jump on the phone because of potential waste of time, people maybe not answering the phones, but also your free time may not be the center's business hours. So it's, I think, really important to allow our families to have the opportunity to have that self-service option so that whenever that is that free time, maybe it's a new mom nursing her, her little one, um, she can shop around and look and maybe book that tour or book that orientation session. So that one, that one really stood out to me. And same thing with valuing, you know, valuing your time. Like I said, we're all super, super busy. So being quick with that follow-up, not making people wait, I think that from my experience has had a really positive impact on, on certain families and it stood out to them as an expectation and a positive experience. So I think that's, I mean, that's just pretty high, 73%. So I think that's a metric to keep in mind and, and remember moving forward. And I think you just said something really important. Uh, we're seeing a big shift in the workplace with mm -hmm. mothers and women staying in the workforce much longer, which is a great thing for everybody, but also Absolutely. makes care more important. And the other part of that is they're working during the day, the same hours that care is open. So if you aren't meeting your parents where they're at, if you're not giving them these multiple options, now I think that story about your friend, well, mm -hmm. yeah, most millennials do like texting. We know that, but some are going to prefer email and some are going to want to call. So how are you facilitating all of that? You know, we know that they're going to want to be uh, on the internet, doing research ahead of time, having a good way to navigate. Well, some of them are going to have some questions before they tour if they're looking for a really specific program, unless you've really dialed that in on your website. Yeah. And so they might want to call, but there's no doubt that giving them a self-serve option will allow them to do those things. So, you know, your example of after hours, I think is so good. And I think that's one of the biggest hangups right now when we hear, when we talk to our industry as a whole it's well we get all our leads to come in overnight and then they just sit there yeah and if i'm a parent or you're a parent and you know i would like to think you know everybody on the call whether you have a single center whether it's multiple organizations what are you doing when a family comes in at night mm -hmm. and when your director's coming in the morning is the first thing they're doing answering those or is it prepping the center for the day and maybe making sure that everything's clean and in order and all the teachers are showing up so before you know it, the morning hours are just slipping away. And in a world where millennials and our parents and your guys' buyers are expecting a really quick response, that's hard. Now, if you think on the flip side of that too, and I always like to bring this up, we talk a lot about engaging the buyers where they're at. 
But by being able to offer these, and where we're going to go in a moment is you're actually going to be able to put systems in place with automation, with organization, with templates, with educational information with your website. By setting all these things up, it's going to drastically cut down the time that your directors have to spend getting a family from that new inquiry to enrolled, getting them from enrolled to retention. And so I think there's a big uh, sort of overlying thing here where, yeah, it's about the parents. You have to cater to them to get them in. You want to put your best foot forward. But it's also about how can you in your day to day go about being successful, taking some of this manual work off your hand uh, and being really an advocate for the entire community so that you can go back as a director to doing the things you love and as an organization to supporting uh, the community that you know, you're so endeared to. I think something that also I've noted as well is that um, the one size fits all approach is definitely something that's of the past, right? So previously, you know, it was you had to call. And so now we're starting to see less phone calls, still that being an option, but uh, more introduction of emails. And now I think we're seeing that approach that that one size fits all of just either you have to call or that's it, or you just get to emails and that it isn't the appropriate approach anymore for um, our current family demographic and that like you said you need to cater to your families and give them those options and when you do you're more likely to have success in terms of families being able to connect with you in their preferred method I think that's key giving them the option to choose their preferred method as well and so when you give them these options right we talk about this optimized parent experience first an unoptimized parent experience and I think you know when we look at what does really, really good look like, and we've hit on some of those key points, right? Well, let's first, let's talk about giving parents what they want. 80% of these parents are millennials. So give them quick. And by quick, I mean immediate responses, even if that's just an automated email, letting them know uh, that you got their request. It's about using text and self-service inconvenience. If a family and a parent can drive most of the scheduling, you don't have to do that. So right now, what we found is that 51% of all parents are filling out forms online for more information. Meaning that if you're set up the right way, there's a chance that, I mean, at least half are gonna come in, but of those half that come in, there's also a good number that's probably gonna wanna schedule their own tour if you give them that option. And so when we think about the importance of giving parents information, of eliminating the friction of the back and forth, of eliminating the friction of having to come in and having to call and making it as easy as possible. Well, there's a certain ROI and it's a pretty big one associated with that. You know, we don't talk about finance a lot because we wanna talk about what the center can do for the kids, what you guys can do for the communities. But the truth of the matter is, is that the finances allow you to do all the things that you love, all the things that you got in child care for in the first place. And so it can't really go uh, understated here. And so if you've got a tuition at $2,000 a month and you're bringing in $100,000 a year for each family, you know, if you optimize that journey, not only are you going to end up cutting down some of your costs, but what Celine was talking about earlier with that word of mouth referral, well, that's free marketing just for doing a really good job and setting up optimization. And so you start getting in this web where now it's okay. So we've got a really strong good first outreach, good educational information. We're using automation and organization to help pull parents along, give them the self-service that they want, communicate with them in the way that they want, and ultimately get them to tour and then sign up for that first day. Because that's where that follow-up still continues after, uh, after the tour. Versus the unoptimized way, which you know, I think we kind of let off with that, right? It's clunky, it's a lot of communication. It's overwhelmed directors having to prioritize, what do I do today? Because now I've got leads coming in from walk-in and phone and internet and email and notebooks and binders. And, uh, oh my gosh, my teacher's not here today. Now I've got to fill in as the cook or I've got to fill in in the classroom. It's, we put so much on our directors from, again, if you're an owner and director yourself, you know that even all of uh, you know, the larger centers out there that we work with across the world, hundreds of centers, these organizations, the director's job doesn't really change much, no matter how big the business. Yes. And it's a lot to offer. So you know, when you think about optimize, yes, parents, wonderful. 
directors in a staffing area where we're always cognizant of staff, being able to give them a really good process here, um, the retention factor there is real as well. So the next thing here is, so what can you do about it, right? How do you offer an easy way for parents to hop in? Uh, well, number one, optimizing your website. We touched on the website a couple of times. When you think about it, the first thing, web pages, uh, our landing pages and web forms. So we did a survey, 70% of childcare business owners said that they leveraged web, uh, web forms and landing page. 38% uh, use several. So again, why is this important? Well, you can have a web form, right? Where parents fill out information or schedule their own tour with your availability and then use automation to send a reminder out right away. So thank you so much for filling out this form. Here, by the way, if you wanna schedule your own tour. And then once you do that with these web forms, it means you're gonna aggregate and consolidate and capture all of these leads in one platform in one area. So you'll always know where they're at. You're not going to risk missing one because they're going somewhere else. The other thing we talked about meeting parents everywhere, well, parents do research. And when parents do research, there are these great listing platforms out there. There's, uh, there's toddler, there's care for kids. So what's going to happen is if you're listing on those platforms, and 51% of our centers currently do, we have integrations to pull that information in as well. One of the things I love about these platforms is if you're interested in them, if you're not sure about them, some of them do have free versions. They also have paid versions that can help bump you up in the search, make it more relevant. Uh, but again, in a world where parents can go anywhere, where parents are doing research, the presence in these multiple channels is really important. And then we talked already about word of mouth and referrals from parents. Well, social media, that type of social proof works the same way. So 90% of today's parents are online. What does that mean? It means that you have a really good opportunity to go show parents what's going on at your center just by engaging in a Facebook. So is that a post about what's going on at your center? Is it an event that you're hosting for the community? Is it pictures that are going up? Is it parents that are filling out their own information on there and maybe doing their own back and forth within your own page on your center or for your business? So when you look about all these things together, it's about in a world right now, of options, one of which is staying at home, how are you giving off this idea of we're safe, we're responsive, we're having fun, we're educating, we're developing, we're here for you as a parent because we know how stressful it's been with having kids at home while you're trying to work for so long. We know that there's a lot going on in your world. Your child's safe here with us and you can have that peace of mind. And so when you think about the social proof there, and just the ability to show these things off, it can be such a force multiplier. And now parents, again, they're gonna have that comfort knowing that this is where they're going. Uh, and then they're seeing it all reinforced. I think it's important to note as well that a lot of those families, um, maybe they're not following your page, they're likely stalking it, you know? They're likely keeping an eye, like, shopping around, checking it out. So keep that in mind as well, that maybe you think, oh, well, we haven't had that many new families join the group, or we haven't seen that many new people kind of participate in the content. Families are checking that out. They are going to your web pages, they're checking your blogs, they're looking at that stuff. So I think just keeping that in the back of your mind, that if you're going to keep that content fresh and, and you know, communicate to those prospective families, that's going to be essentially confirming to those those prospective families that you are offering essentially what they're looking for and what, and what they want. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. And how about a little bit on response time? Because Celine, I know that you've worked with, with response time uh, really well and had some <laughs> great experiences with this too. Could you share a little bit about, um, you know, what you're seeing here, how you've worked with response time and sort of how it's impacted 
uh, the different areas that you've seen throughout your you know, career and childhood? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, I touched on before that people, you know, our time is really valuable and people really don't want to feel as though their time is not being respected and valued. And so I think response times really ties into that because essentially what you're doing is you're, without even saying it, I'm saying, yes, your time is valuable. Yes, I appreciate you as a prospective customer. And I'm going to proactively give you the information you need and provide you the support that you know I think that you deserve. Um, previously where I used to work we actually received a lot of really positive feedback about how quickly um, our team used to respond to families and one of the benefits I didn't actually really realize until after the fact was that it almost eliminated this reason to continue shopping around. And so families would be, you know, mom would carve out 45 minutes of her time and jump online and submit, you know, a, a few inquiries. And then if she received a response almost immediately, I remember speaking to one parent that was just so blown away that we had number one, seen her inquiry and then taking the time to respond to her almost immediately. And then number two, we answered her questions. We proactively provided her information. She didn't even know she, you know, she had questions about. Um, and so her shopping around almost stopped because she was already at the next step. She had just booked a tour with us. She was already kind of progressing in the customer journey. And because it was so quick and efficient and easy for her, her requirement to keep finding other services decrease significantly. Um, so number one, it's a bit of a respect thing as well. You know, you're telling your your prospective family, we value you, we appreciate you, regardless if you can enroll with us or not, we value you. And then number two, you're almost eliminating a little bit of the competition um, when you're responding so quickly, because next thing you know, the families join the wait list or they learned about your beautiful services and you know, your autumn menu. And so they're already hooked and interested and in looking at your Facebook page. Um, so it has a lot of positive benefits just by being so quick um, to interact with your families. Yeah, and you know, back to the example that we were talking about a little bit earlier, right? Like if you're responding right away versus another center that maybe that lead comes in sort of at the evening, right on that yeah. fringe, and then all of a sudden the morning's busy. Well, it could be a full day before, or maybe two days before yeah. another center gets back. You've responded within five or 10 minutes and also given them an option to schedule a tour. Well, they could be in and out of the center center yeah. before the other people even call. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, that is, that's without doing anything, really, right? That's giving them, maybe it's one phone call, maybe it's a self-scheduled tour, but it's using systems to help drive this really powerful behavior. Um, and I love that example. And I know you mentioned you did some stuff uh, as well with follow-ups, uh, reminders, and how you guys structure that as well. Yeah, so um, the organization that I used to work at was a large organization um, here locally in Brisbane. Um, and we, in fact, really prided ourselves um, on our fast response rates and also very high conversion rates as a result of that. Um, and that was for a couple of reasons. I mean, number one, uh, we, we honed in on our demographic, which was we knew we had millennial families. And so we approached it with that text messaging um, approach that we knew a lot of our families, but also email, you know, like I mentioned before, we're really catering to our families we're giving them the options um additionally uh to that you know we were setting the tone so we were letting our families know um setting the expectation letting the families know you know you will hear from us and this is our intention with you so really not leaving question marks with the families providing them information um additionally we know that families like to self-serve so where possible we were really providing that information and making that self-serve really easy for them instead of them having to go find it we were bringing that self-serve to them, which we saw beautiful, really high, high conversion rates on that as well. And we, we you know, we received a lot of great feedback that families really appreciated that. Um, and something I've noted here on the slide that I think is, I think is really important to um, kind of note is after that tour, that follow-up, I think is so, so critical for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, I think it's a nice courtesy thing to, you know, send a follow-up, maybe contact them over phone, you know, depending on your organization. Uh, but additionally, if a family's toured your service and for whatever reason has maybe not indicated that they're interested in, in enrolling, most likely they have questions, maybe there's nerves, maybe it's a first time parent, uh, you know, maybe there's a bit of uncertainty. So be proactive with that, you know, 
think about if I was in that situation, and many of you maybe have been, what would I want to know? What information am I missing? And be proactive and provide that information to them. Don't wait till they ask you. And that was, you know, a couple of slides ago, we were talking about that back and forth. Eliminate that completely. You know, what, what would a parent want to know? Give that to them without them asking. And I think you'll find that that gives them that peace of mind. It almost feels like they already know you because without them having to say, hey, I'm nervous about this, you've given them the information. You've said, hey, we're here. You know, we want to know how it went. And the next thing you know, you may find that that family has said, yep, no, we're ready to enroll. Or when can we come in for an orientation session? So it, it was really successful for us at that organization. Um, and it's quite a simple process and strategy to follow. Um, and like I said, we really prided ourselves on our conversion rates so um you know we didn't we didn't reinvent the wheel there it was just kind of following that best practice and it worked really really well for us yeah and so if i'm listening to this right now and uh i appreciate everybody who is still here doing so uh one of the things i might be asking is it sounds like you guys are talking about a lot of follow-up like you just gave me an extra 15 emails to your parents it's going to be nuts it's going to be crazy uh, how am i going to keep up with all this well you know we talked about at the onset that the way to do this is to help use and, and use a platform that will help give automation to all of these. So when we talk about doing this, it's really that first word right there, automate confirmation emails and texts. Yeah. But you don't just have to automate the confirmations, right? It can be that new contact dust lead comes in, automate that follow-up, give them a self-scheduled tour option, have that on your website. And then when you capture this information on the form, it's now logging and documenting these interactions by email and by text that you're having with parents. And so you're gathering information, you're sending relevant, educational, still personalized information through templates that you know are gonna delight the parents, mm -hmm. right? And I think about one of these reminders, what, what a great one would be if the family doesn't enroll, right? We talk about this. How about an article or an issue they might've discussed that's concerning them? You know, I think one of the things uh, that we talk about even before the tour is maybe all the safety measures that you're going through at the school to keep it clean and keep it safe. Some of the educational programs and um, for the different types of schools out there, why yours? Why now? All of these can be set up to be sent out automatically. And then the follow-ups are there. The information is there so that when you get to the tour, when you hop on those calls, you're now talking to those parents and said it was you the whole time because it was. So this is not about, oh, let's do more or, oh, let's lose that personal touch. It's about setting up automation with an organized system that then allows you to dive in quickly, personally, and then have the records there for you as well. And I think what's important to note there as well is that for a lot of organizations, maybe you are doing blogs, maybe you already have that. But for some of those smaller groups, uh, we're not necessarily saying start writing blogs and start creating all this content. There's a lot of amazing content that, in fact, as you got into the profession of childcare and into that that world, you you know really resonate with and in fact are likely the frameworks of how your organization and your service um, runs and work. And so don't hesitate to share those resources. It also shows that you know that's your expectations. Those are your standards. These are your practices. And so sharing resources outside of your own, while that's fantastic as well, um, is also really beneficial because it shows that you are aware of these other practices and standards as well. And there's a lot of beautiful, beautiful resources already available online. So again, you don't need to reinvent the wheel and start creating blogs. You can share some of these resources already that, are, that already exist. Such a good idea. Uh, use what's already out there to your advantage. And the last really thing uh, you've done a lot of work getting parents in, making sure you're giving them a good experience. Knowing where your leads are coming from can help save businesses. Um, or I should say help businesses earn 30% more. So this works in two different ways, right? Number one, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. It's saving money. You're going to market in multiple different channels. We talked about the investment in the website and paid ads and Google and all these diverse set of leads. We talked about Facebook. Maybe you're also doing billboards or referral programs or some type of discounting, right? It's money out, money out, money out, money out. And it's good money to spend because you need to reach your parents in a wide variety of places. But once you start getting parents to come in, it's about figuring out what's working and refining that. 
So if you're spending $10,000 a month on a billboard, but it's not driving any traffic into your center, well, you could not use that anymore and deploy that money elsewhere, right? We know staffing is top of mind for a lot of people. So maybe eliminating one marketing channel that's not converting and using that money to put higher teacher wages is a really good idea to not only retain people, but get new staff, open new classrooms, fill more enrollments. So it's less about this being, oh, well, this is only one part. It's this is one business and all of these parts really interact with one another. So by having this data, by understanding it, by developing multiple channels and then leaning into the ones that are working and saving money in the areas that aren't, you can really take your business and be very not only responsible from a fiscal standpoint, but also spend your valuable time and energy where it really matters. Because there's nothing worse than at the end of the day, sitting down and saying, I don't know where these leads came from, or I don't know where to get more, or where did my day just go? I don't know what happened. And I know we've all had those days. I, I certainly have myself. So tracking these leads, uh, again, when you come in, investing in a lead tracking platform, right? And this can come in many different shapes in many different ways, but it's a great option on that contact us form. Have an option for where parents heard about you set up different landing pages that are associated with your different campaigns or promotions so you can capture all these different areas. It's not about um, understanding so much, oh, well, we wanted this place and this place and we've got all these different areas uh, that maybe you don't know about, right? Or parents, all these different places we heard about you. Cast a wide net, have the parents select it, and then you can get a really clear picture about what's working for you. The other part about this, uh, it's starting to come up more and more. Parents or your center might not live in your area, right? There might be a path to work if people are coming back out. It might be, uh, you know, a higher end center, a mid-range center, a lower range center that's maybe out of the necessary neighborhood. So understanding and being able to reach those parents, identify those programs, say, oh, hey, well, this parent's actually not even in our area, but they're coming to us. Maybe we should actually start spending more money over here because it's driving you in. So having different systems, tracking, tying that in, uh, ultimately understanding where are these leads coming from, engaging with them meaningfully, and then knowing where to spend your money, uh, all help in a big way to fill your center. And you know, as we sort of put a capstone on our evening here, uh, we wanted to give you an example. Uh, and have Celine kind of walk you through a customer of ours who has used this effectively to grow their center. Yeah, I mean, I love this case study. Um, I work with The Pocket and The Brook, and they're uh, a well-known you know, group here locally in Brisbane. Um, and so prior to Child Care Serum, I mean, they were trying to do it all, like most of us are, uh, you know, run a beautiful, successful child care group. Um, you know, run a successful business and make and make money and then also offer a beautiful experience to their families. Um, and the beautiful thing is that with the introduction of Child Care Serum, they really have been able to do that. Um, they've seen some really positive gains and efficiencies in terms of providing that really great experience for their families. Um, and one thing to note is that, you know, that after tour um, process and, and and an area is often one that can be a bit of a gray area and people are often not really sure the appropriate steps. And it sounds like with, you know, childcare CRM, that's been an improvement and they've been able to really see um, some efficiencies. And also, you know, it's important to save staff time. We're often seeing that with um, a lot of um, organizations being a little bit short staffed efficiency in your staff time and your own time is so, so key. Um, and I love to see that that's happened for them. Um, and I note that, you know, Elise mentions uh, reporting in child care CRM, which, you know, I can attest to is, is fantastic and, and I relied on quite heavily myself and it allows you to measure your success and, and see really critical um, metrics in terms of how your organization is, is working and doing so, um, you know, just a really nice case study for a, a local group here um, and really happy to see that they're, you know, they're happy and enjoying um, the benefits of introducing child care CRM. Well, again, if you're interested in more information, whether you're a customer, uh, whether you're new to Child Care CRM, please reach out to us. We would love to talk to you. The website, www.childcarecrm.com. 
if you'd like to see the platform actually understand better how child care CRM can bring these best practices to your centers and to your business, feel free to fill out that contact us form on the website, or you can email us directly sales at childcarecrm.com. So thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, again, anytime you host a webinar and you can see the full group stay almost the whole time. It's great. Uh, and Celine, <laughs> thanks for joining me here. Thank you so much. That was really fun. Yeah. Thanks everyone for making the time for us this morning. Really appreciate it. Bye. Thanks.